Hi there and welcome to Honors Biology Lecture Video number three for Ecology. This is the third video for Ecology. Now, this on today's lecture, you're going to need to understand how energy flows through, a, through an ecosystem, basically. You're going to have to understand um, what is being eaten and how energy is moved through. So let's first explain some simple ter terminology. These show you a couple of what's called food chains, and these arrows show you the flow of energy. So let's talk about it here. Real simple. This plant's energy goes to this insect, the herbivore. Um, this carnivore, this, this small mammal will eat this insect. So now that's a carnivore. The energy from this mammal will go to the snake, and then maybe a hawk will eat the snake. Over here, phytoplankton goes to this thing called zooplankton. This is the plant version. This is the animal version of the plankton. Plankton get eaten by other larger organisms that eat the plankton. You may not think of them as carnivores because they're eating such small things, but yep, they are carnivores. These are not plants. These are consumers that are feeding on phytoplankton. And then the carnivore here gets eaten by a bigger fish, and then a bigger fish gets eaten by over here a killer whale. So what is going on here? These arrows show the flow of energy, okay? Students sometimes screw up the flow of energy. They have an arrow pointing at something they think it is being eaten. For example, this fish is not eating that killer whale. No, this energy of this fish is going to the killer whale. So you don't point at what you eat. You point at what is eating you, all right? So the phytoplankton is getting eaten by the zooplankton. The zooplankton is getting eaten by this carnivore, then by that carnivore, then by that big carnivore, all right? These are called feeding levels. Each feeding level is called a trophic level, all right? <clears throat> the primary or first order consumers, these guys, excuse me, these are the primary producers at the bottom. Some books don't use the term primary producers. They just call them producers. I believe we just call them producers, but if you take AP Bio or AP Environmental, they will be called primary producers. So the producers are at the bottom. They form the base of any food chain. <clears throat> these are the things that are doing photosynthesis or at the bottom of the ocean, they're doing chemosynthesis. So the base of the food chain produces food, photosynthesis, the producers. All right, and then the next level up, they're called primary consumers. What, what, what do they do? The primary consumers are the first order. They eat the producers. So this is a first order or primary. First order, primary, same thing. So the things that eat the first order, boom, are secondary. The things that eat the secondary are third, a fancy word for third, tertiary. If you eat third, you're a fourth or quaternary. And every now and then you'll see a fifth level sometimes um, in an aquatic biome, but not very common, sixth, very rare, if at all. And I'll explain to you in a little bit why they are rare. At the very top of the food chain, things that don't get eaten by other things, top consumers. Now, humans, we break all these rules. We can eat technically anything. We do not count. This is in the natural world, so to speak. Now, a food chain. Grass, grasshopper, energy of the grass goes to the grasshopper. Energy of the grasshopper goes to the frog. The energy of the frog goes to the python. The python's energy then goes to the eagle. This is a food chain. But you take all these food chains and you mishmash them together and boom, you got a web. It is a web. There is information going everywhere. All right? So the eagle here eats a bunch of things. Think of all these arrows coming at the eagle as mouths of the eagle. The eagle is eating the python. The eagle can take energy from the python. The eagle can eat the rat. Eagles can eat small wolves. You think, is it going to eat a wolf? Yeah, if they're puppies, yeah, they will snatch them. An eagle can eat a frog. An eagle can eat a smaller bird like this thrush. So this eagle has one, two, three, four, five mouths, and they are all feeding in every direction. So this is a food web. It's a very tangled assortment of information. All right, now, in this food web here, I'm using this one as an example. I'm using another one that's simpler in a second. We have the producers. These are the things that are the base of the food web or the base of a food chain. Um, in this one, they're here at the bottom. They're all at the bottom. They're easy to see. They look like plants. They're plants. All right, here, mangoes, lavenders, flowering plants, corn. These are all plants. These are the producers. Now, how do you recognize them? Well, you recognize them because they're pictures of plants. Well, you need to know that the producers in a food web do not eat. They, they are not eaters. They are producers. Since they do not eat, you'll notice no arrows. See, arrows are always pointing away. No arrows point at the producers. 
that's how you would find them. So if I give you a food chain with letters and didn't give you actual um, names, you would have to figure it out based off of arrows and where they're pointing. You're going to see this on some of your assignments. So no food is being eaten by the producers. Look, no arrows are pointing at them. Look at the eagle pointing at it, pointing at it, pointing at it, pointing at it, pointing. At it. It's eating a bunch of things. All right. What does the wolf eat? Well, rats, and in this case, the thrush. All right. Who eats the wolf? Also pythons, baby wolves. These little guys, they get eaten out in the wild. The frog. All right. What does the frog eat? Grasshoppers, butterflies, fruit flies, dragonflies. But the frog gets eaten by the python, the frog gets eaten by the eagle. So that's how you read a food chain. The rat eats the grasshopper. The rat gets eaten by pythons, eagles, and wolves. All right. Showing you the flow of energy. Now, <clears throat> you can count. This is going to make it, it's going to be, it's going to get difficult. Think of this. This is zero. The, the reason I'm giving the, the base of the food chain is zero is it is not a, an order consumer. This is the producer. So pretend that's a zero. This is a first order. This is a second order. This is a third order. This is a fourth order. All right. Now, let's use a simpler one to answer some questions. First question. How many herbivores can be found on this food web? Interesting question. To find herbivores, you first got to find the producer, which is, in this case, a plant. There it is, the green plant. An herbivore, by definition, an herbivore only, only eats, an herbivore only eats a producer. Only. Okay, so we have two things that eat the producer. We have a mouse and we have a grasshopper. But the definition of an herbivore is that it only eats a producer. Grasshoppers only eat the plant. A mouse eats the plant and it eats the grasshopper. So it is not an herbivore. So how many herbivores are on here? One herbivore is on here, and that's the grasshopper. Definition of carnivore. Only eats consumers. Okay? Only eats consumers. So grasshoppers eat a plant. <clears throat> they are not a carnivore. Mice... They eat a plant and a consumer, but they eat a plant. So that doesn't mean they're a carnivore. They're not a carnivore. The definition of a carnivore only eats a consumer. Owls eat mice. There's one. They eat frogs. These are consumers. So there's one carnivore. The frog is a second carnivore. The snake is a third carnivore. So there's one, two, three carnivores. So the grasshopper, herbivore. Frog, carnivore. Snake, carnivore. Owl carnivore, meat eaters or consumers. They only eat other consumers. And then the mouse, this is our omnivore. So one omnivore, one herbivore, three carnivores, one producer. All right. Which order consumer is the frog? So you have to find the path to the frog. You start with the producer. So here's the path to the frog. You go grasshopper, so that's first order, and then the frog, that's second order. So which order consumer is a frog? It is a second order consumer. Which trophic level does the snake belong to? So I pretty much want to know which order consumers is it. All right, so let's figure out how to get to the snake. There's more than one way to get to a snake because there's two arrows that get there. So let's keep it simple. Green plant, mouse, snake. So zero, one, two, second order. Okay, zero, one, two, third order. <clears throat> so the snake is a zero, one, two, second order, zero, one, two, three. So it's a second and a three. It's a two and a three. All right. So the snake belongs to a two and a three. Which trophic levels does the mouse belong to? Okay. So zero, one, it's a first or primary. And there's another way to get there. Zero, one, two. It's a first and a second. All right, so the mouse is a one and a two. Next question, which organism competes with the snake? If you compete, it means you eat similar things. And who, which organism eats similar things as the snake? I would say it's the owl. The owl eats the mouse and the frog, and the snake eats the frog and the mouse. So the competitor of the snake is the owl in this case. Which organism should have the most abundant biomass? <clears throat> Here's what you need to know. As you get higher numbers, 
the biomass drops. And I'm going to explain that to you in a second on a slide. So I'm asking you now because I have it on a food web and I want to use it as an example. So as you get bigger in value, your, your, your consumer number increases, your biomass will decrease. So for example, plants are at the bottom of the food chain. They are the lowest number. They're a zero technically. They're not an eater. They're a zero order consumer, you could say. They have the most biomass. Okay. As you go up, zero, one, two, or zero, one, two, three. The snake is zero, one, two, or zero, one, two, three. The snake and the owl both have a three. They are the highest number, so they should have the lowest biomass. The most abundant biomass will be at the bottom, the green plant. Okay. So the most biomass, green plants, abundant. Least biomass, it's the biggest numbers are the owl and the snake. They are third order consumers, so they will have the least biomass. As you go up a feeding, 90% of the energy is lost in biomass or energy in this case. So when you lose 90% each jump, as you go up and the numbers get bigger and bigger, there is less organisms as you go higher up a food chain. That is just how it works. All right, so here's what I'm talking about, energy transfer. 10% of the total energy consumed in one trophic level is incorporated into the biomass of the organisms the next level. So you are going to get a problem on one of your assignments, and it's going to tell you numbers. And if I say to you, start out at the base, we're not, I'm not going to start with sun. You're going to start out at the base. I'm going to give you the producers. If you have 10,000 joules or 10,000 kilograms, I don't care what unit it is. If you have 10,000 units of energy, in the base of a food chain, every time you go up a successive feeding, you lose 90%. So only 10% passes on. So 10,000, what's 10% of that? 10% of that is 1,000. 1,000 joules of energy ends up in the next level or calories of energy. It doesn't matter what unit or kilograms. It could be any of them. The next level, only 10% of this carries on. So 1,000 becomes a hundred. 10% goes up in the next level. 100 becomes 10. And now we're at the third level. If we go up to the fourth level, what's 10% of 10? The fourth level would have one joule of energy. So you can think of energy as mass. Mass can be converted into energy. Less mass, less energy available. So this is you can think of this as energy or biomass. So as you go up a feeding, 90% of the biomass or 90% of the energy is lost each successive feeding. So because of this, you eventually run out of room. You cannot have sixth, seventh, eighth level feeders because there isn't enough biomass to go along. All right. So organisms at lower trophic levels are usually more abundant. You have so on our planet, <clears throat> we have the, the most biomass is in the form of photosynthesizers on our planet, basically, because they're the producers on our planet. The least abundant organisms on our planet are like super high on the food chain, like killer whales and, and, and great white sharks are in low abundance. Um, any high level predators in the wild also, like hawks and eagles, you don't have that many of them. Why? They're high on the food chain, so they are low in abundance. You don't see a bunch of hawks and eagles flying around all over the place. You see a bunch of birds way lower on the, like pigeons, <clears throat> they're, they're way low on the, on the food they're, they're, they're like scavengers. They'll eat anything. They're like a first or secondary consumer. They'll eat anything. So you see pigeons everywhere because they're lower on the food chain. You don't see eagles and hawks. They're a fourth or fifth consumer. You don't see that many of them. All right. So higher trophic levels contain less energy because of the phenomena of how much energy is lost between levels. We will stop there.